Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti, here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions, not your slander. Why don't we just get into this one? You know, the first thing I seen when I popped on YouTube this morning was the big METH bust in Idaho. I noticed in the comments on the video that a lot of you seen that as well, and you were directing my attention to it. Here's the thing. I haven't had time to dive into that one yet, but you know I will, just to make sure that the characters involved don't match up to the characters involved in our story. But as I watch this press conference, it reminds me of the thing that I'm really trying to get across in all of my videos, and that is the inhuman, absolutely unthinkable manner in which law enforcement goes about attacking the illicit trade of narcotics in our country. It is mind-boggling how they use distressed citizens. Because let's face it, most of the people involved in drugs are in distress. They're not doing it because it's some wonderful career path. They're doing it because they have a problem. And it's all they know to do at the time. And to top it all off, when they are caught, not only are they punished severely as if they committed a actual crime, but they are often used as pawns by law enforcement to try to build their way up the chain to a larger arrest. And in the process, law enforcement puts their lives and their families' lives in danger. And that is exactly what we see happening here in the Idaho 4 case. Whether they want to admit it out loud or not, it is what led to this atrocity. And it has led to more than this atrocity, this practice by law enforcement, which I used to agree with 20 years ago. Today, I am a advocate against it because of the irrelevance to the impact in the drug trade, number one. It has had zero effect. We can look at 50 years of history, and we know the only the only effect of the drug trade has been to build massive prisons, increase law enforcement's presence, and trample on citizens' God-given rights to privacy, as well as impose on other rights, such as search and seizure rights. 20 years ago, you couldn't be pulled over for no reason whatsoever and then forced into a search because there was no reason for it. Today, that is happening, I see it every day. I see, I see people pulled over every day sitting at the back of their car as law enforcement searches their vehicle. They're not searching their vehicle for any other reason than trying to find those illicit narcotics. When did we allow the government to impose on us in this way? In fact, the entire drug war has eroded citizens' rights more than anything else since the inception of our country. But when you get right down to it, it is the specific tactic of using people as informants and forcing them into situations that put them in danger for no other reason than trying to advance in, a, in an investigation to get to a bigger fish, 
For no other reason than that, they put these people's lives in danger and then they just leave them to the wolves once they're through with them. And that is absolutely un-American. So I'm always going to speak out against that. But as we look at this press conference on the victory that law enforcement had in this big drug bust, I can almost use their words in this press conference to show you exactly what happened in the atrocity on King Road. What put, what put everything in motion for it? So allow me to do that. As we listen to this very brief press conference, I'm going to paint the picture of how everything in this atrocity happened exactly the way that I say it did using their words, their procedures, their processes, and they're claiming victory. And they're lying as well, and I'll prove it. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, generally speaking, when we're talking about drug cases, they start off on a pretty small level. Um, it could be something as simple as a tip from the community that, that is fed into a law enforcement agency. It could be as Agency. It could be something as simple as a traffic stop that occurs. Uh, whether it's a state trooper or a sheriff's deputy or a city officer, when that case starts, the unique thing about here in Idaho is those partnerships start from the very beginning. Those cases tend to grow legs. They tend to get a little bit bigger. They. They will move outside the city limits, they'll move into other counties, they'll counties, they'll move into multiple counties and multiple cities, and, and, and was the case in this case, um, move to multiple states. Um, and that's one of those things that we are proud of here in Idaho and that unique perspective that from the moment of that case's inception, we are working together. There are no delays. It, it, we're immediately in this as a team from the, from the start. If you turn and you look at the partnerships that we have here, quite frankly, in my mind, this should dissuade or make any high level criminal organization second guess what they're going to do and if they're going to push their product here in Idaho. about making sure that those partnerships are strong and that we do it together. He understands that while we might be individual law enforcement agencies, we understands that while we might be individual law enforcement agencies, we are one law enforcement community. And I'll go on for you, Josh. Um, you talked about how uh, a controlled buy was, I guess, one of the methods or procedures. Yes. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, a controlled buy, and, and our experts are right behind me here, a controlled buy is when law enforcement sets up essentially an undercover operation I'll go on for you, Josh. Um, you talked about how uh, a controlled buy was, I guess, one of the methods or procedures. Yes. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, a controlled buy, and, and our experts are right behind me here, a controlled buy is when law enforcement sets up essentially an undercover operation where the supplier of the drugs is unknowingly selling 
a quantity to law enforcement, which secures the drug so it's out of the community and documents the sale, which then, of course, forms great evidence that the defendant or the target of the investigation was actually selling that illegal substance. Once again, it's all about transparency. Don't be a pencil neck. Stand up at that podium. And when you're asked a question, a direct question, you look them right in the eyes and you lie. Just tell the truth, man. Tell them who you use for those controlled buys. It is rarely ever an undercover officer. It is almost always a distressed citizen that you have arrested that you're forcing into a position to do those controlled buys, therefore putting their lives in danger. That's what you're doing. And when you're asked that question, just be honest, answer it truthfully. So we make the people we arrest do it. And then the next question would have been a follow-up. Well, doesn't that put their lives and their families' lives in danger? Then you answer it truthfully. Yes, it does. But we believe that our mission here is more important than those people and their families' lives. That's what you should say if you were honest. That's why I don't like a dishonest government governing us and putting policies in place and implementing them on us and then lying to us in our face. BS, folks. But I just wanted to share that with you. I'll dive into that a little bit deeper and look at the parties involved and see if any of those people had some nefarious connections to our case because I'm not an advocate for them. I'm just not an advocate for law enforcement's processes that they use them for. But please like and subscribe to the channel. Post your comments, thoughts, criticisms. Till next time, Pavarotti's out.